Here's a situation that honestly sounds a bit absurd when you first hear it. Imagine spending around $8,000 on a home battery system, something you buy for backup power, for solar storage, and really just for peace of mind when the grid has an occasional wobble, which let's be honest, it does happen from time to time in places like Australia, especially when you're a bit rural. And then one day, without you touching anything or doing anything or being aware of anything, Tesla remotely drains that battery from uh, whatever it is, probably full, I suppose, near the top Z to zero, completely flat. And not only that, it refuses to charge ever again. You're left with this very large, big, white, expensive box on your house wall. Basically, it's the kind of giant iPod that won't turn on. So that's not hypothetical as well. That's what's happening uh, right now to thousands of Powerwall 2 owners. And behind the scenes, this has turned into something really messy and very expensive. And now serious enough that is, uh, it's heading into a class action uh, lawsuit, basically. And uh, it's in the United States. I think this story is just getting started. Let's jump into it. Hello, folks. My name is Ben Alexander. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate all of the, uh, the don there's been a few donations, people joining as members on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube, that sort of thing. This is one of those stories where you read the headline and think, hang on, how is this, how is it allowed? So I want to walk through everything very, very slowly, very, very clearly, because most people have just seen something like uh, Tesla power walls are bricked and have not really understood what has actually happened or what it even means for normal homeowners like you and me. So let's get started and uh, let's start at the beginning. Tesla issued this recall covering about 10,500 Powerwall 2 units in the US. Uh, these were units that were built between the end of 2020 and uh, the end of 2022. So within that two year period, a few years old. So we're not talking, you know, very old hardware or anything like that. They're still in their prime really. So uh, the issue was traced back to battery cells supplied by a third party manufacturer and Tesla has identified a defect that could in rare cases cause overheating. It doesn't sound so bad so far. It actually doesn't sound like it, Tesla have done anything bad or anything like that. So let's just go into it. In total, 22 overheating incidents were reported. Six involved smoke, five uh, resulted in actual fires and thankfully nobody was hurt or injured or any homes were uh, damaged. But a home battery uh, overheating or catching fire next to someone's living space or car or anything like that is definitely not something you'd take lightly. So Tesla did what Tesla usually does. They pushed over um, over the internet and over the air update, depleted the batteries, left them dead. Except this time, it wasn't really a fix. Instead of re uh, repairing the issue, Tesla remotely drained the affected batteries to zero state of charge and then locked them so you can't use them. Fully disabled. A lot of owners uh, opened their Tesla app one morning and instead of seeing that you know, very familiar green battery icon, they were met with a very large gray box saying that the system has been uh, disabled for safety reasons. Okay, but you, you'd wanna know what's going on about this. You know, what's happening because it's, it's my big battery on my house, it's very expensive. What's gonna happen? Weeks and months are passing. Overnight, people lost their backup power, they lost their solar storage, and in some cases their electricity bills actually went up because of this, so they're actually paying for this issue now because their whole you know, en home energy setup depended on that power wall working. And this is where it really starts to fall apart. So a class action lawsuit has now been filed uh, known as Brown v Tesla Inc. Uh, the core argument is fairly straightforward actually. So Tesla knowingly sold a defective product, disabled it remotely without providing an immediate replacement and then left customers stuck with a very expensive wall ornament beautiful though it may be, uh, for months on end, and sometimes with no communication at all. And there still has been no resolution. One line from the legal filing sums it up very, very well. Rather than offering even a partial refund or even a, you know, a full refund, you know, which is probably due as an offering anyway, or even a prompt replacement within, let's say, a month or two months, something like that, Tesla simply switched the systems off and then just did nothing, hasn't really contacted, contacted people. So effectively, your battery might be dangerous, we've bricked it, good luck. And uh, maybe at some point they will deal with this and do something, you know, you know, fix it, replace the batteries. Months later, many owners still have not heard anything meaningful back. Some people have been lucky enough to get some sort of message. To be fair, Tesla is not the only company dealing with battery safety problems. Lithium-ion thermal runaway 
is a known risk across the entire industry. Everyone understands that now. The real problem here is what happened next, or more accurately, what, uh, what didn't happen next, if we're honest. According to the lawsuit, homeowners were told to wait months and months and months for replacement units. Some people were never contacted again. In other words, installers who originally fitted the power walls had gone out of business, leaving customers with basically no way to even get a replacement installed. One US owner summed it up really, really bluntly in an online comment, they said, their power wall was affected, drained, taken under service for months. Tesla stopped responding, their installer no longer exists, and they're now stuck with a dead battery and no solution. They finished by saying that they'd never buy another Tesla product again. And uh, that's kind of a sad thing, I suppose, because um, they're, they're decent products. Probably a lot of people feel the same way if you, if you had that experience, really. This is uh, not like a car recall where you can still drive the vehicle while waiting for a service appointment. Uh, when your home battery is disabled, you basically lose the entire point of owning it. It just doesn't do anything for you, especially if you rely on it during storms, blackouts, or you live very rurally. And uh, that's precisely why many people bought these systems in the first place, to be there, you know, to give them energy. So here is another interesting detail. In Australia, when a similar recall process happened earlier this year in, uh, in 2025, Tesla said it was considering compensating customers for higher electric bills or outages caused by the disabled batteries. Sounds good so far, but considering compensation uh, is, you know, and paying it are two very different things. Nobody's been paid yet. It was just a nice polite message that people have received. The lawsuit alleges that Tesla has not compensated most US owners at all, if uh, actually if any, I think it's a one or two, but uh, yeah, for the loss of uh, functionality over these months of downtime. So think about the scale of this. More than 10,000 power walls need replacing in the US alone. That is a very big logistical challenge. You know, if you've got a thousand of these very heavy batteries being taken somewhere, times up by 10 and a half. It's a lot of uh, money, logistical, uh, issues you've got to figure out. Tesla's energy uh, network is growing, so it's uh, nowhere near as mature as uh, or resourced as Tesla's automotive servicing network, but basically the battery side of their business is, is coming up, but it's just not as, not as uh, matured at this point. But from the customer's point of view, none of that really matters. They paid for a product that was supposed to last 10 years. Instead, after just three or four years, it's uh, been remotely disabled with uh, no clear fix in sight mustn't feel very nice. So what happens next? What what does happen next? Realistically, this lawsuit could push Tesla into one of, th I would say, three paths. First, they could dramatically speed up the replacement program now, put some resources behind it that, uh, you know, the legal pressure is on. Second, they could start offering financial compensation for months of lost use, even if it's partly, uh, you know, to demonstrate good faith ahead of court proceedings. They could do that. Or third, uh, they could offer full or partial refunds, bill credits or electricity cost coverage for customers that have been left without working systems. Uh, at the minute, right now, Tesla's website does not give a clear replacement timeline and uh, the company hasn't publicly commented on the lawsuit. We just know about it because it's all public. This also raises much bigger questions about the home battery industry as a whole. These systems are not cheap. You do not buy one for fun. Uh, you buy it to store energy from the solar uh, system you've got and then you can lower your bills and keep your house uh, running costs uh, lower and you know keep things just sort of going smoothly. If a company can remotely disable that hardware indefinitely, well trust is the big question mark. Trust is now basically the elephant in the room, isn't it? This recall does not help that trust at all. Anything that can be bricked over the air, whether it's from an American company or a Chinese company, uh, d deserve scrutiny, to be honest, and it, because it's too much money from ordinary people and uh, it's a bit of a red flag, I would imagine. I, uh, I don't think there is the same nerves around Tesla doing anything untoward, but it's, it's definitely something that needs scrutiny uh, just for good measure. It highlights the downside of trying, you know, critical household infrastructure to remote software control. Updates are a really, really great thing, and especially when they improve performance or add features, but they're not so great when they turn out to be uh, an $8,000 paperweight for six months, I don't think, or eight months. Personally, I'm a fan of systems that retain strong local control, no internet connections at all, 
Uh, there are companies out there offering home batteries that don't rely as heavily on constant cloud connectivity. And I think that approach has real value. You can easily Google them. It's very, very easy. You can get server rack batteries, for example. Super, super uh, simple when you compare it to uh, Tesla batteries because uh, there's no, no cl cloud connectivity and all the data is in front of you. You can get a specialist to come fix it. I think it would probably end up being cheaper overall. And there are some very good, reliable companies uh, from different parts of uh, the world outside of China producing them as well, if that's, if that's an issue for you, buying them from China. My take on this is pretty simple though. Tesla needs to communicate way better, act faster, and actually just act. And if replacements are delayed, compensation should be basically just automatic. That's the default. If there is no compensation, an explanation needs to be given. Homeowners should not have to fight for it. That should be non-negotiable. That is not the point of a company like Tesla. We expect things to be done reasonably and fairly uh, to a decent standard, I would imagine. And I think Tesla, have been, you know, have, people know them for that now these days. The panel gaps are gone, the cooling on the screens in the cars all fixed, the batteries are reliable. Uh, the cars are well made, the ergonomics when you're driving, really, really good. So Tesla do make some good products these days. And uh, while this situation might lead to better safety standards across the industry, it is also a warning. So imagine if this happened at much larger scale, not just 10,000 units, but hundreds of thousands or even millions. Batteries aren't like fridges or microwaves. They're very, very complex, very, very heavy, heavy, very expensive, high energy chemical systems. They need clear contingency plans for when things go wrong to any degree. But uh, because they will go wrong at some point, that's, that is a given because it's chemistry and electronics. Which one's going to go first? Usually the electronics, if we're honest. So I'm genuinely curious to know what you think. What are your thoughts about this? What could they do better? What could be changed? What do we, should we be worried about anything in the future? If Tesla remotely disable your power wall, should you get a full refund as a default, as an offer? I, I think you probably should, or at least a fair compensation for the downtime, or is this just part of pushing technology forward? Are we all gonna pay that cost together? Let me know in the comments. I read all the comments. I basically get, I would imagine at this point, I'm pretty convinced I get some of the best comments on, on YouTube, to be honest. The depth of, you know, the quality and the, the brilliant comments is it's great, really. So thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your time. And a very big thank you to the channel members on Patreon and YouTube and all the people that have bought me a coffee. Someone bought me a coffee the other day. Five coffees in one go. What a legend. Thank you very much. Your support helps me keep going with the channel. So if you've um, got any ideas for what you'd like to see on Patreon or anything like that, I'm all ears. Catch you in the next video. And also any questions, uh, put in the comments below. And uh, I was thinking to maybe start a uh, community online. The, the first real community that's not got any algorithms in it. Everyone just chips a little bit of money. And then basically, if you want to sell something for a reasonable price or, I don't know, have a chat with other people in your area about different things, uh, organize a barbecue, you go to that community. It's not like Facebook, no algorithms. You don't see certain posts. Basically, it's like a little, a real online community, but I want it to transcend that and become something that, something that means that people will really connect and you maybe share phone numbers, have chats, and you meet up in the local area. And uh, yeah, basically I think the fact that there's no algorithms is, is, is a really big deal these days because everything is sort of suggested for you if it thinks you're going to be addicted to it. So I think I want to sort of break that barrier if I could. What do you think about that? Is that a good idea? Would you be a part of that? Let me know.